Law of Causality Causality is the pull between meanings, that which links all things in a chain of relation. At the top of a hill in the eastern region of Liernia lies an old, dilapidated church. The passage of time has not been kind, its walls crumbling and roof collapsed. This place has seen better days, and though its history may be forgotten by most, one occupant still remains. Your tarnish haunt you. I welcome you to the Church of Vows. I am Muriel, steward of this sacred chamber. My apologies for the unseemly state of affairs. Do you know the origin of this place? How it came to be known as the Church of Vows? Well, that is a shame. But who can blame you? The shattering has caused us, all of us, to lose sight of something very dear. It is here, at the Church of Vows, that the great houses of the Earth Tree and the Moon were joined by the matrimonial bond between red-haired Radican and Renala of the Full Moon. And so our church holds in view the monuments of both houses, the Earth Tree of the Capitol and the Academy of Rea Lucaria. You wish to know more of Lady Renala? She is queen head of the Carian royal family, and governor of the Academy of Rea Lucaria, the great and beautiful full moon witch. Renala, the last queen of Caria, comes from a long tradition of Carian queens, with the first said to have been a young astrologer who gazed at the night sky as she walked. She had chased the stars every step of her journey. Then she met the full moon, and in time, the astrologer became a queen. Renala, like the previous queens of Caria, encountered this enchanting moon when she was young, but like no other queen before her, she was also a champion. By force, she led the Glintstone Knights into Liernia and established Caria as royalty to the greater lands between. Through wit, Renala was able to attain the highest rank of headmaster at the Academy of Raya Lucaria by charming the Academy with her lunar magic. Through brain and brawn, Ranala was able to alter the history of Karya. No longer were they just astrologers, they were now sorcerers, and she was of the highest order. Ranala was wickedly intelligent. From her crown to her scepter, all of her royal regalia represented the might of her mind, wielding a staff that only those of the highest intelligence could control. Ranala may have been the most intelligent person in all of the lands between. The First Liernian War. Radigan's glory burns red as his hair. You wish to know more of Lord Radigan? Lord Radigan was a great champion, possessed of flowing red locks. He came to these lands at the head of a great golden host when he met Lady Renala in battle. Radigan, champion of the Erd Tree, marched with the might of the Golden Capital's best but their sheer numbers and strength were no match for the Carrion's Oathbound. Numbering fewer than 20, the knights sworn to the Carrion royalty wielded swords that could serve as catalysts, letting them produce sorcerous battle skills that mere physical strength could not compare. The Carrion royal prestige was embodied in the grandeur of the blades of their magical great swords. Even in the face of insurmountable odds and the waves of invaders blessed by gold, the Carrion Knights never wavered. With cool minds and clear thoughts, they fought through sleepless nights and the madness of war. Lucidity was always a companion to the Carrion Loyal. The Carrions did not just have knights in their employ, but also sorcerers from the Lazuli Conspectus, singular among the greater Raya Lucardi Academy, who saw equal power in the moon as they did the stars. Their loyalty sworn to the moon, these sorcerers could conjure magic greatsores that could deliver sweeping blows and gain the strength of knights. The Carrions were experts at politicking from even before their foundation as a recognized royal line when they were just mere astrologers. 
their neighbors on the mountaintops, the fire giants, were considered their friends. These friendships would turn into long-standing packs, and among Caria's human retainers, the descendants of giants could be found bearing the same honors as their human counterparts. Called into service when the queen invoked an oath they swore, the trolls fought arm in arm with their human comrades. No matter the might of the Erdtree forces, even with the great champion Radigan at the helm, Caria and her loyal allies would not falter and would not break. Thus did the wars continue. In the Second Lyurnian War, no victory for the Golden, nor for the Moon, no prize but atonement, the birth of a vow. Lord Radigan was a great champion, possessed of flowing red locks. He came to these lands at the head of a great golden host. When he met Lady Renala in battle, he soon repented his territorial aggressions there and became husband to the Carian Queen. After two campaigns, the unstoppable forces of the Urtree were at a standstill against the immovable might of Caria and her queen. Allies come in all shapes and sizes. Even the most obstinate enemy can one day become a close friend. At least, that is what Renala believed. Whether what happened next was born of love or of political ambition is not known, but what is known is that it was a miracle. Do you possess any celestial dew? Then I would like to share my knowledge with you. Concerning the miracle of this Church of Vows, Radigan once cleansed himself with celestial dew, repented his territorial aggressions, and swore his love to Renala. The Order of the Erdry and the fate of the Moon were conjoined, and all the wounds of war forgiven. If the Erdtree was to make amends for their transgressions, they would need to offer something in return for peace. In return, they offered a marriage between champion and champion. Thus, the Carrions could reign independently over their vassals with no fear of aggression from their eastern neighbor. And the Erdtree Empire now had safe passage to the south, able to march on the fringe lands unabated. This union would result in three children, General Radon, Praetor Reichard, and Lunar Princess Rani, as well as their stepbrother from their father's side, Blythe the Half-Wolf. One of the greatest gifts in the world is that of children, and a mother's love knows no bounds. While Renala loved all of her children, her love for Rani was special. She was more than just her daughter. She was a Carrion princess, and one day would become queen. She would have to follow in her mother's footsteps, rule the Carrion royal house, and follow Carrion traditions. When Rani was young, she was led by the hand of her mother, like Renala's mother led her to meet her moon. What she beheld was cold, dark, and veiled in occult mystery. Indeed, for to the world, the Carrions and their queens were adherents to the full moon. Sorceress pilgrims would make their way to the mountaintops to behold the moon that they thought young Renala gazed upon. Yet, it is tradition to pass down the truth, from mother to daughter of the dark moon. There is another tradition shared between the mothers and daughters of Caria. In the grand library of Raya Lucaria, there is a locked chest that is passed down to Carian princesses. Inside, a wedding ring, a mother's wedding ring for her daughter, hidden in a locked chest that has been passed down from many queens to many princesses, so that one day the consort who she would be wed could give. And one day this ring would pass from Renala to Rani, from mother to daughter. Imagery of the cold and dark moon, veiled in occult mystery, and the symbol of a cold oath. An oath of the queen to the dark moon, an oath of consort to the queen. When Radigan wed Renala, she gave him this ring so that he may bestow it on her finger, and to honor long-standing tradition, the Carian queen would gift her consort with a legendary armament. Less of a sword and more of a beam of light itself, a moonlight greatsword, a guiding moonlight. However, Radigan's loyalty would not always be to the cold and dark. 
and he would reshape this gift later in his life to proudly symbolize the tenets of his true master. This blade of the dark moon would become a Golden Order greatsword, made of light and modeled after the Elden Ring itself. But for a time, all was well for Caria and her queen. Something would happen though that would break Renala. The once great and beautiful Queen of the Full Moon would only feel cold, dark, and alone. On a night of wintry fog, the Rune of Death was stolen, and the demigods began to fall, starting with Godwin the Golden. The lands between were shook by the death of a scion of the Golden Bough, but another child perished that night as well. The thing most dear to a mother would be taken away from her. The love of her life would slip from her grasp, never to return. The death of Lunar Princess Rani. The death of Rinal's only daughter. The cycle was broken. The traditions were worthless. What is a mother if she loses her child? What makes a queen if there is no princess? The Carrion royal line would end with Rinala, but for Rinala, her world had ended. The beautiful full moon witch had waned, her night sky was empty, and the morning would never come again. She had not lost just her daughter, but her future, her hopes, and her dreams. However, when Godfrey, first Elden Lord, was hounded from the lands between, Radigan left Rinala to return to the Erdtree capital, becoming Queen Marika's second husband and King Consort, taking the title of Second Elden Lord. The mystery endures to this day as to why Lord Radigan would cast Lady Renala aside, and moreover, why a mere champion would be chosen for the seat of Elden Lord. Renala would have to be alone with her grief, a grief she could not share with her husband. Although Radigan was loyal to the Golden Order and was compelled to return to the capital, he was still the father of Rani and husband to Renala. No matter where his true loyalties lied, and no matter the oaths he would break, he could not bear to see the love of his life in such pain. He would still attempt to protect her heart in his absence. He would always try to mend what was broken. He would also leave behind a gift for his beloved, one that might help ease the pain. Lady Renala was left alone, cradling the amber egg Lord Radigan bequeathed her. Now she devotes herself to it through forbidden rite, the grim art of reincarnation. You would do well to remember, severing a vow, strongest of bonds, has consequences ever more dire. An egg of amber was left in place of consul. If Renala could not have her daughter back, she can make a new one, again and again. Inside this amber egg was a piece of the Elden Ring itself, the great rune of the unborn. With the power of creation, she could bear new children, perfect children who could be born anew, again and again and again. But these children born anew are all frail and short-lived, imperfect beings, each and all. As long as the memory of love exists, Grief can never go away. Only when memory fades, so too does the pain, and the joy with it. Thus did Renala repeat the process, eventually becoming utterly dependent on it. It was sleep to her, and with each awakening memory of grief and of joy, she faded into oblivion. Law of Regression Regression is the pull of meaning that all things yearn eternally to converge. This way, Tarnished. May I have a word? A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. I am the witch, Rena. Dressed in a witch's pointed hat, rigid and frozen through, of a style associated with practitioners of heretical sorcery, Rani returned to the lands between. Her spirit housed in a doll modeled after her secret mentor, the woman who led her to her moon and garbed in her very clothes. Rani has returned to weave her night into being. Though Rani may not know it, 
she was following in her mother's footsteps, disguising herself in the same garb that Renala once did, and forging oath-bound allies like she once did, and overcoming her enemies like she once did, to follow the path of the Dark Moon like she once did. In the Grand Library of Raya Lucaria, there's a locked chest that is passed down to Kari and princesses. Inside, a wedding ring. A mother's wedding ring for her daughter, hidden in a locked chest that has been passed down from many queens to many princesses, so that on one day, her consort, who she would wed, could give. And that day has come. So it was thee who would become my lord. Oh, little Rani, my dear daughter, weave thy night into being. She will, Ranala. She will. Hey everyone, Jack here. I wanted to take a minute or two at the end of this video to say thank you if you watched all the way through, if you watched my previous video, and also just give a little explanation to some of the theories that I threw into this video. Uh, we have a woman, Renala, who is, when we find her, continually making new children who are frail and short-lived over and over and over again. Um, and as I painted in the video, I think it's because she misses her daughter. There's a long tradition, as stated in the discarded palace key and the Dark Moon Greatsword, of princesses giving, getting passed down a wedding ring or giving their future husband a, a beam of light from this occult moon that they secretly follow. Something like this is a little unorthodox, but it has a lot of validity. It also gives us a different understanding of the timeline and the lore within Alden Ring. If Renala is truly grieving Ronnie's death, well, that would mean the Night of the Black Knives occurred before Radigan left for the capital. It would mean that it happened before Godfrey was banished. So what does that mean for the story? If Radigan wasn't at the capital yet, and as some people believe Mikola was allied with Godwin in some way, what does that mean for the birth of the Twin Imperians? If Renala has been an adherent for the Dark Moon and it's a tradition that's passed down from mother to daughter and mother to daughter and shared with their husband, what does that mean for the Carrion Goals? Why did they come to Liurnia? Why did Radigan get sent from America to go to war on Liurnia and eventually have a marriage together? If he knows about the Dark Moon, what does that mean for America knowing about the Dark Moon? So there's a lot of questions we can ask just for changing one simple thing to our understanding of the story. Um, we have an example of Rena the Snow Crone really being Renala in disguise. We have her Ronnie's Dark Moon telling us that her mother led her to her moon and her moon was a Dark Moon, but we have some spells and some items saying that the snowy crone witch was a heretical witch in the woods who taught Ronnie. So which one is it? Castle Soul and Uncovering the Mysteries of the Eclipse. Please stay tuned. We'll be talking about Mikola, the Knight of the Black Knives, Ronnie, Godwin, and Golden Order Fundamentalism in the next video. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you very much. Fill it up and again and then fill it up the ancient with everything.